Men are four times as likely to die by suicide than women. In a poll in 2010, there were approximately 35,000 reported suicides in the United States. 80% of those suicides were men. About one in five men in the U.S. have an alcohol dependency problem. About 3.5 million people in the United States have schizophrenia. And if diagnosed by the age of 30, 90% of those with schizophrenia are men. 72% of prison inmates have a mood disorder or mental illness. And did I mention 95% of prison inmates are men? One more for you. The highest rates in suicide in the United States come from Caucasian males who are 85 and up. Those were some pretty alarming statistics. That's scary. And I've done 500 videos on this channel and I've never broken it down to male and female, but when you see that there's four times the suicide rate in males than females, that's something we gotta talk about. It's something we have to talk about. Uh, men are struggling. Men are struggling. It, 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 we're the CEOs of more companies. Maybe we make more money. Yeah, we're making so much more money. We're so happy we're killing ourselves. Just because there's this uh, patriarchy and people think we're doing so well and are so happy and life's so easy, it's not. It's not, man. So I, I'm passionate about this one because not just because I'm a man, but because I think I have a pretty good idea as to what's going on and what's happening. And I'd like to share that idea with you. And let's, uh, well, let's break this down. First, let's talk about identity. Identity. It's something you struggle with from, from the years of high school or elementary school all through your entire life. But really, it starts when you're thrown, it's weird. Think about high school for a second. You're thrown into a, a room, a building, and you're going through puberty. You don't know who you are, not to mention you have to learn all this stuff and you got homework like crazy. You're finally attracted to the opposite sex and they throw you in this room and they're like, good luck. And you're like, okay, what group do I fit in with? Who are the people that resonate with my personality, who think the way I do? Or what, what should I really do? Who do I fit in with? What's my sphere of influence here? And so I went to high school in the early 2000s. And if you're in high school, if you went to high school, we all know in society and in high school and wherever you go, there's always different groups based on interests and personality. So there were the goths, emo groups. There were the sports people. There were the gamers and nerds. Uh, you've seen the movie Mean Girls. There were like the popular girls who kind of bullied other people, kind of. The high school was fairly nice that I went to. But we, we separate ourselves into all of these groups, right? And then we identify with that group. That becomes our personality. Humans are tribal tribal species, right? We grew up in tribes. If, if what's good for the group, or if, it, if what's good for you is good for the group, then you fit in like that. So what happens is, and this is why people identify with their mental illness, because you finally find someone that gets you, that understands you. You, have, you suffer from depression? You suffer from anxiety? Me too, you wanna to talk about it? Yeah. Your depression's cured? What do you have to talk about? You, you, don't, you don't want to lose your own identity. The depression was your identity. You were part of that group. People can identify with their mental illness and that's a very troubling thing, which you know um, allows them to almost enjoy it, dare I say, or not seeking the proper treatment for getting rid of it or getting help or managing it successfully, I should say. So we, we attach ourselves to identities and it's not just how we see ourselves. No, everyone's like, I, I went on this uh, European trip when I graduated university. I'm like, I got to find myself. You know, that's a, that's a funny thing to do. People do that all the time. Yeah, I just want to figure out who I am. I need to go travel. I need to meet people and figure out who I am as a person, which is all well and good. But identity isn't just shaped by what you think about yourself. It's how other people perceive you. If other people in your group and other people in society see you a certain way, then you're more likely, more likely to express that, which gives them pleasure. And you get that validation and there's that feedback loop, right? So we know two things then. One, and you know this just from walking down the street and going through university and high school and whatever, the education system, your work, 
that people separate into groups. That's how we survive. We separate into different tribes. It's really funny to see uh, that in the city. And secondly, identity just doesn't come from you. It comes from other people. You're very influenced by other people and what they think of you. And you want to be liked, right? You want to be included. You want to belong. We're humans. We want that for us and our families and each other. So you do things to impress other people and to get them to like you. Easy enough. And you're like, Scott, yes, 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 we know, we know, we know. Okay, 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 okay. Let's talk about men. Certain groups that identify with, let's say a group identifies with riding motorcycles, Harley Davidson motorcycles and tattoos and that kind of culture. They listen to heavy metal on their bikes and, you know, they've got leather jackets and big beards. You're nobody in Toronto. You are no white male today without a beard. You need a beard. This isn't a beard. I'm shaving today, but I'm a nobody without that. What's with, what's going what's going on with beards now? Why is everyone growing a beard? You want to be different? Shave. Anyways, so you have this personality of this 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 persona of someone who who has the leather jacket and the big beard and the the haircut and the tattoos and the hardly loud motorcycles and that kind of group. Well, geez, imagine someone who is identified with that kind of culture and that feeds off of his or her friends with that kind of tough attitude. They expect a tough attitude from that person as they identify with this moto club. Do you think that person would dare tell anyone about his feelings? Think about that. Now, think about it. Easy it would be for someone who's part of maybe um, the drama club who identifies with drama, who loves expressing feelings and getting into new characters and just talking and shooting the shit with their drama partners. Now he may have a very easy time expressing how he's feeling. I mean, I'm going through a really tough time right now. I'm feeling very anxious. My heart's pounding very fast for no reason. You think the Harley Davidson dude is going to be like that? I really don't think so. So one of the problems is that people identify way too much with their groups and their interests. You know what's weird for me? I used to want that. I never fit in anywhere, man. I never did. I never did. I, I didn't love anything so much that that became my sole purpose and became part of my identity. I'm so passionate about mental health and mental illness and psychology and YouTube. But I don't join YouTube groups. I don't join mental health groups and talk about that and I, I love music and sports and everything uh, I love playing basketball the most I'll do is I'll join a basketball club maybe I'll jam at the local studio downtown but I don't wear band shirts and I'm so psyched about live music you know those people you see live music I'm somewhat of a minimalist but I'm not on Queen Street West in Toronto which is full of hipsters and man buns and people wear plaid shirts and they're all about smoking weed and peace and it's like the modern day hippies but a fake. I'm not about that. I have no idea where to fit in. No idea. I have a group of friends and they're not, I really identified with anything either. We're like the lost souls. I used to not like that but now I think it's freeing. It's freeing. Because the expectations are not lower, but they're unknown. I don't have a personality where someone expects something from me all of the time. You're in the motor club, you wear leather all the time, you wear black, you're kind of dark. Therefore, you're not going to talk about your feelings. And we expect a stern personality from this person. Dude, I got tons of personalities. I don't fit in with one group. I fit in wherever. I'm a curious person. I, I'm part of so many different things and I don't have a certain identity. I don't. This is something people struggle with and they do their best to fit in so much and, and identify with something or someone or some group or some movement. This is what advertisers do all the time. They want you to identify with their brand and join this movement. Join this movement. It works. So, what did we talk about? Why don't men get help then? Why don't men get help? Well, one could be they're part of a group that doesn't allow them to express themselves. That's totally cool. 
That I understand. Well, I don't understand. But I can, like, this I don't understand how I'm not part of a moto club. I'm not part of the Queen Street West hipsters. But I can imagine how difficult that would be if someone expects you to be a certain way and you totally flip on them and then talk about your feelings. Would you be part of the group anymore? You would lose your sense of self. You would lose your identity if you're not part of that group. So it's fear of rejection, why people don't talk about it. Sorry, why men don't talk about it. I'm not used to talking about one gender here. Fear that you will lose yourself. Fear that you will be rejected from the group. Where does your identity go when you're not part of the group? It's gone. You affiliated with those people so strongly and that image of yourself so strongly and you built your ego up for so long that you dare not talk about your fucking feelings because your sense of self is gone. And who are you then? You thought you knew yourself. Now you're going through these crazy emotional roller coasters and you don't know who you are. You don't want to risk that. You don't want to risk it. You won't. In some cases, would you rather die than lose your sense of self? Would you rather die than lose your identity? Because you're going to be alone anyway if they don't accept you. You're going to be alone and feel rejected and even worse if they don't accept it. Maybe you don't take the risk then. Risk. Maybe you don't take it. Maybe you battle on your own and you try to battle for so long. All alone. And hide under this expected personality and this one that you've built. And you keep fighting and you keep fighting and eventually it's too much. The feelings are too much. The feelings are too strong. So you turn to substances, turn to drugs, unhealthy behaviors, and then possibly decide to end it all instead of getting help. That's one perspective. That's one that I've thought about for quite some time. Because stigma wasn't a problem for me. The moment I knew something was wrong, I talked to my brothers, my sisters, and my closest friend. And I said, something's not right. I'm having really fucked up thoughts, dude. Like, and this was in 2008. Not, like, so much wasn't around that there is. That's 10 years ago. And I was, st I didn't know what mental health was. I didn't even know. But I said, something's wrong. Something's different. Talked to my parents. Cried. Got the help I needed. Cool. And I've tried to figure out why it was easy for me. I'm not going to say easy. But why it was an automatic thought. Why it was automatic. Something's wrong. Do something about it. Something's wrong. Do something about it. Problem. Solution. Problem. Solution. That's the way my mind worked. Getting help is a choice. It is a choice. You can choose not to, or you can choose to. Barriers in your way, I know, but regardless of those, it's a choice. And if you've watched the video opening up about mental illness on the channel, I'll put the, put the card up there. It's kind of saying, screw the stigma. Screw it, man. What do you have to lose? Your own sanity and your own life. And we'd all rather you live. And I'm sure your group would too. I'm sure the people that you identify with, and the people that you love, and the people that love you, want you there no matter what. Don't let people's expectations, people's thoughts of you, people's judgments of you, rule your decisions. Don't let people's thoughts about you dictate your choices.
It's your choice. Make the right one. Get help. To all the men watching, to all the men watching, hang in there and really think about, really think about what's the worst that could happen. So the worst that could happen if you come out to your friends and you say, I'm struggling, let's talk about my feelings. What's the worst that can happen? They kick you out of the group. That's the worst. And then you ask yourself, okay, so was that group really part of my identity and did they align with my values? If they're, if they're willing to kick me out of the group for having feelings. The answer is no. You go find your other group, your other tribe, right? You find your other tribe. You don't have to stick with one for your entire life. You can have as many as you want. You can have as many as you want. So what's the worst that can happen? That? Then seek help. That's nothing. Stay strong. Keep being you. And don't forget to express yourself. I'll see you in the comments.